Hello, I'm just out here tinkering. I've been out here cleaning up the sh shed here, trying to get ready for the casting season. The oil is still a little too cold, and it's still a little too thick, so I gotta wait just a little longer. And so I figured it's nice out today, it's about 60 degrees. The weather's real nice. So I figured I'd grab the forge out. I got a bunch of this leaf spring here. It's 5 16 inch thick, and this stuff here in the center, it's about three quarters. So I'll cut some sections out and I'll flatten them out to make the stuff for the vice jaws and everything ahead of time, and for some parallels or whatever I need. And try to work on the milling spindle a little bit, try to force some material back into itself to swell it out to make the size of steel that I need. The finished diameter that I was going for was two inches and it was two and an eighth. So I'm going to try to shove the material back into itself and upset it till it's around two and a quarter. That'll give me plenty of material to machine off to make the flange and stuff I need for it. Alright, let's get the forge and everything out. I'll get these stuff cut up and we get everything fired up and get everything ready to go. Got some leaf springs I cut up. They're 5 sixteenths or 3 eighths thick. I cut them to about 6 inch long. And I got a pile of those. And I got some 3 quarter inch ones too. These will be the vice gels for my mill. Or for the vice for the mill. And these will be cut up to make parallels or um, angle gauge angle blocks and stuff. I just gotta flatten them out to get them straight. And construction crew next door doing only God knows who's knows what, so like they're drilling an oil well there. But I'm barely on on this side. I think I need a bigger stump. But it'll work for this time. Now I know I need a bigger stump. I also made a tool a while back. It's just a round plug because it doesn't need to index. Took a ball end mill and ran into it. Now I got a rivet header that'll go into the hardy hole. Fire up the forge. Good old burner. Fastest hair removal since the last time I fired it up.
setting block. I use it for the hydraulic press for pressing stuff down because I know it's not going to move that. That's two inch by nine inch steel. Nine inch diameter, two inches thick. Hold in the heat a little bit because I don't have a KO wool out right now, so that should work. <sighs> Got to try out new hammers. That one about kills you. Broke my good tongs, which it was time for making a new pair, anyhow. These have been with me since I got started casting. That's hence why the weld is broke or starting to break because it's been used and abused for way too many years. I'll make a new one or I'll just fix it. Right now the forge is full, so. Yeah. slice of cheese and oh. so how did this thing work really well actually that made things a lot easier and I like the heights a lot better than my other anvil too because it was
that's the size of it so big difference okay it's the next day I've got everything cooled down everything's been annealed it's nice and soft so I can machine it this is around 5 16 it's two and a half inches wide by some pieces are probably about six and a half inches there and other pieces are six inches or just hair under I made a few longer because I have that where the hole was in it um, this is 5160 I believe it's just leaf spring and you can harden it temper it use it for cutting tools whatever or you can make the angle blocks parallels whatever you want and harden and grind them if you want these are same thing only much thicker they are three quarters of an inch thick so I was going to use these for the vice jaws but I think I might just use one of these in all honesty because I don't need anything that thick they all came out very very flat as you let me there as you can see there's no light coming underneath of it so yeah they are very flat so I'll turn those into vice jaws and tooling and stuff I need and I'll I got plenty more if I need more. As for this, as you can see, I needed this thing was all pitted and rough and everything. So what I did is, by the time I had turned it down, the to clean up the rough uh, pitting and stuff, it would have been too small for the bearings. So what I did is just shove the material back into itself mushroomed it out now it's it was two inches right on and now it is wrong end it's two and a quarter so now I got plenty of material to make the flange and stuff out of because I was going to go two and an eighth for the flange and being two and a quarter I got plenty of material in case it's slightly out of round or something but we got everything ready to go for the vise and the spindle I've been working on the patterns just upgrading them a little bit because there was a few little things in them that I wasn't too happy about after seeing my friends versions so I'm been working on that I'll show you real quick and as for how the anvil performed that thing is awesome thank you so much man for that that thing is so much better than what I was using I do need to make a new stump for it though I kind of blew the front of my stump out and it was too small for that thing anyhow this thing's like three times the size of my old track anvil thank you again man okay, I got these all coated and ready to cast so I've already got a flask that everything fits into or this fits into nicely 
I just made up a quick and dirty core box. It's just a piece of PVC pipe since the inside is two inch diameter. And wrap some tape around it to do it up to two and a half inch outside. And just wrapped in a roll of sheet metal with some tape over it to seal it up. It's good enough for one core, so yeah. One or two cores, that's all I really need. I'll get this out of the way and I'll show you the vise, what I've done. Okay. What I did is I extended the jaw just a little bit so I got more meat on the jaw here. So everything's a little more solid. Everything's coated and nicely put together, ready to cast. Here's the jaw. So, I just made this up real quick. This will go inside of the disc here and be pulled up and it will be a lot more solid setup than the original vise had. So it will make the swivel ring a lot more rigid. But yeah, everything's coated, ready to go. I've already got the flasks ready to go to put everything into. The vise is a four inch vise. So, or just here over four inch. It'll have about four inches when it's all machined up for holding space, which is the same amount that I have on my shaper vise. So, it's perfect for me. The one viewer was asking how what's the dimensions on the milling head up to the flange. It's the flange is about three quarter inch thick. It's about seven and a half inches or seven and a quarter from top of the flange to the bottom here. Six and a half from bottom flange down, and from here it's four and a quarter. I didn't really have any dimensions I was going off of. I just was making it look right and going off of the sizes that I needed everything to be machined to in the end. So I'll have probably about a quarter inch to come off of each end when it's done. So. I just sized it up for that. The tubing is, or the cardboard is three and three quarters. So, yeah. The, oh yeah, the flange up top is, looks like four and a half. Yeah, it looks like four and a half right on. So, hopefully that answers some of your questions. Hey, right, I'm gonna call it quits. Thanks for watching. See ya. Hey guys, I got a channel for you guys to check out. 
really good channel. Um, goes by the name of Hidden World Forge. He does some really cool stuff. Right now he's building a power hacksaw from scratch. And I'm not talking a little desktop unit. It's like twice the size of my power hacksaw. It uses, I think, an 18 or 24 inch blade on this thing. So, it's an industrial sized unit. So, definitely a challenge. And he's building this thing completely from scratch. Some of the stuff that he's doing with it is pretty cool, actually. Or most of what he's doing with it is really cool. So, he does a little bit of blacksmithing, a lot of machining. He's got it. I'm not sure what type of lathe he has, but he has a big K and T mill that he just hogs everything off with. So, yeah, definitely go give him a look and give him a sub. Really good channel, and one I really like watching.